So you went out and you splurged. You bought a standing rib roast. You have some nice sides, maybe mashed potatoes, french fries, maybe some green beans, you name it. You've got it all ready to go. But what sort of sauce or gravy are you going to put on that delicious standing rib roast? Well, stay tuned for a delicious and easy to make standing rib roast sauce. Welcome to the Sauce and Gravy channel. This is Johnny Mac, and we're going to dive into a rib roast sauce, a standing rib roast Dijon sauce. Buckle up, let's go. All right, let's get into it. Grab some spices. We're going to make a rub for this standing rib roast. Feel free to use any spices that you like. Whatever you like, throw it on in. I'm first adding one tablespoon of powdered garlic. I like to keep my rub simple. I don't want it to be too powerful in taste. I want it to add flavor, but not be too overbearing. Next, I'll add one tablespoon of ground thyme. And for a bit of a kick, ground black pepper, one tablespoon. I'm gonna use the drippings and the fat from the standing rib roast. So all of these spices, all of these flavors that are in this rub, they're gonna bleed over into the sauce. Next, a little onion powder, one tablespoon. So remember, you can use any spices that you like in your rub. Whatever you find tasty, use it. And for the final item going into the rub, some salt. I'm using a little bit less than one tablespoon. If you like it salty, add a little bit more. It's taster's choice. Give everything a mix, and if you have an old spice bottle, you can pour it in it. It'll make it so much easier to sprinkle onto the roast. All right, now it's time to grab that standing rib roast. We're going to put that rub onto it. A lot of people like to put olive oil on the rib roast first and then put the rub. I like to put the rub first and then give it a spray of olive oil at the end. One thing to remember about the rub is that whenever you put it onto that standing rib roast, when that rib roast cooks, all of the flavors that you put into the rub are going to drip down into that saucepan, whether it's from the drippings or whether it's from the fat itself, and it'll incorporate that flavor into the sauce. And that's why I like to keep my rub simple. I like to add a little bit of flavor, but I don't like to fog up the flavor with a lot of spices. My standing rib roast, it's about three and a half pounds, so it's on the smaller side. So I'm going to use a high-sided saute pan and a little rack that I got from an Instant Pot. It fits perfect. The roast fits right on top of it. It does the job. Before I put the standing rib roast into the oven, I like to give it a quick spray with olive oil. This will help build a delicious crust on the outside of that roast. Now it's time to cook that standing rib roast. You can cook it to your taste, whether you like it medium, rare, well done, however you like it, it's taster's choice. Because I'm concentrating on the sauce, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I cook the standing rib roast, but I put it into the oven at 450 degrees for 10 minutes, seared it really well, then I dropped the temperature to 350 and cooked it 15 minutes per pound. And here's the end result, a nice crusty standing rib roast. It's sealed in all of those flavors. We'll take it out, put it to the side, let it rest, and while it rests, we'll work our magic on making that standing rib roast Dijon sauce. So check out the saute pan. It has about two tablespoons of fat or that grease that was on the standing rib roast that was flavored with the dry rub. That's perfect to start off our roux. We don't have any drippings. That's okay. That means that that roast, it's sealed in all of those juices and it's going to be nice and tasty. To the two tablespoons of the grease, we're going to add two more tablespoons of butter. Melt the butter down, and now is the perfect time. If you have any drippings, like I have a few small drippings, now is the perfect time to take a whisk, spoon, or spatula and start to scrape the bottom of that pan and try to incorporate them into that butter and that grease mixture. After the butter is melted, add four and a half tablespoons of flour. Grab a whisk and mix that butter and flour together. The burner is over medium heat. We're going to turn this roux blonde. You'll know whenever it's done once it releases a warm nutty type smell and the color of the roux is a light brown paper bag type color. A Dijon sauce for a standing rib roast for a holiday occasion like a Christmas dinner or any sort of special event is absolutely perfect. It's really quick and easy to make and tastes great. All right, so our roux is cooked. I smell that warm, nutty smell in the air. Now it's time to add our cooking stock. Add three cups or 750 milliliters of beef stock. Grab a whisk and mix the roux into the beef stock. Make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the pan. You want to get every little last bit of that roux so that this sauce becomes nice and thick. Crank that burner up to medium to medium high. Bring the sauce to a simmer. Once it starts to simmer, you can turn that burner down to medium to medium low and keep it at a simmer. 
When the roux's been incorporated into the cooking liquid, now it's time to add additional flavor. I'm putting in half of a teaspoon of ground thyme, and then I'm gonna take one clove of garlic, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a smash, remove that pesky skin, and then place that bad boy right on into the sauce. Give everything a mix, and we're still trying to bring this sauce to a simmer. Once the sauce starts to simmer, reduce it for five minutes, it's also a good time to grab a spoon or a ladle and skim the top to get rid of the impurities. It's always a good idea to have a clean sauce. Halfway through the reduction process, grab some Dijon mustard. We're gonna throw in one tablespoon. Dijon mustard is the perfect accompaniment for a standing rib roast sauce. It has such a natural earthy kick to it that just brings out those standing rib roast flavors. The Dijon incorporates into the sauce a little bit easier if you use a whisk. It's a little bit easier than a spoon or a spatula, so grab a whisk and start whisking away. It's been five minutes, we've reduced the sauce down. It's to the thickness level that we want it to be. Doing one last little skim to get all of the scum off the top, making sure that the sauce is nice and clean. But check it out, it's nice and thick, perfect. It coats the back of the spoon, that's right where we want to be. And now for the final touch for the standing rib roast Dijon sauce. One tablespoon of red wine vinegar. This kind of has a sharp taste to it that'll cut through that fattiness of the standing rib roast. It'll also bring out that Dijon mustard type flavor as well as a little bit of that meatiness from the roast itself. It's absolutely delicious. Give the sauce a little bit of a mix and then give it a taste. Remember we put a lot of salt into that rub that we used on the standing rib roast. That kind of bleeds over into the, the greases and the fats that we used in order to make the roux. So just give it a taste, adjust the seasoning if necessary, add a dash of salt, add a little bit of pepper, season it to taste. Give it a little bit of a mix, and at the same time, that garlic, after roughly five minutes simmering, it's really starting to get soft. If you want to take that whisk or a spoon or a spatula and just hit that garlic a little bit, smash it up in there to release some of its flavors, that's a perfect idea. There you go, the Dijon sauce, it looks really good. It's nice and glossy, it's oily, it's thick, it just has tons of flavor. Take it off heat, and now we're gonna filter it, put it through a fine sieve or any sort of filtering device that you have. I'm pouring it into another saute pan. You can pour it directly into a gravy boat or into a bowl. Give the sieve a few little taps. Every little last drop counts. And there you have it. That's how you make a standing rib roast Dijon sauce. It's a perfect sauce for any sort of festive occasion, like a holiday event, like a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner. Thanks for watching the Sauce and Gravy channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and to remember as always, to live, love, and make gravy.